the Hillary thing is, you know, now Juanita Broderick is back in the news, and there, and mm-hmm. and it's not that you, you reading your tweet from two hours ago, you say you say one more time at CNN, mm-hmm. nobody's accusing Hillary of sex abuse. Issue is her role in attacking Bill Clinton's accusers, especially Juanita Broderick. Talk about That's that right. for a second, because if we're going to talk about sexism, Hillary, if we're going to talk about abuse of power and criminal behavior, let's go. Let's get into it. Get into it, Larry. That's right. Hillary said that when it comes to allegations of sexual abuse, women should be believed. And I have never heard Hillary specifically being asked, Juanita Broderick claims she was raped by your husband, and that two weeks after the alleged rape, at a campaign event, you verbally intimidated her. True or false? To my knowledge, Hillary has never been asked that question. Now, Juanita Broderick is a woman who went on uh, Dateline NBC, made the allegation I just now made, uh, and then said uh, what I said about Hillary intimidating her. Yet there's a no-fly zone over asking that question about Hillary. Now, with Donald Trump in the race, because Donald Trump was called sexist for a comment that he made when he used the word schlong, which, by the way, was used by an NPR uh, host on radio uh, back in 2011. Nobody said Jack. Did, didn't he, uh, wasn't he going for she got shellacked and shellonged yeah, came that's out? All, that's, all, that's, all, that's, all, that's all he meant. Yeah, a potato, uh, potato. He has a, you penchant, know, yeah. he has a penchant for sexism, and he said, okay, it's on now, babe. And start talking about these women that made allegations. Now, here's the issue. The issue is not Bill Clinton's behavior. It's not his behavior. It's not his behavior. It's what she did to malign the accusers. And there's two books, and fortunately for the Clintons, the authors of both these books are dead. Oh, no, false. you mean... Hold on, wait a minute. I got to pause there. I got, Larry, I got to pause. You're saying somebody in the Clinton connected to the Clintons well, over the past 30 I, years is dead? <laughs> No, no, I, no, I there's quite that. a big Trump list from Vince Foster <laughs> through about 17 million people. In fact, entire countries were killed, uh, connected to the well, Clinton administration. No, well, I'm just Barbara kidding. Barbara Olson but... wrote, wrote a book called Hell to Pay, and she unfortunately was killed on 9-11. She's in one of the planes. Oh. And she said Hillary Clinton was behind hiring private detectives wow. uh, and lawyers to dig up dirt on Bill Clinton's accusers. It's called the nuts or sluts strategy, either malign the women as, as uh, crazy or horny. Similarly, Christopher Hitchens, uh, a lefty who used to write for The Nation, uh, he died of cancer after he wrote a book called No One Left to Lie To. And by the way, the foreword of that book was written by a guy named Douglas Brinkley. Douglas Brinkley, I saw tonight on CNN, he's a left-wing historian who's very well regarded by the left. He wrote a foreword for this book. And in this book, Christopher Hitchens says, three women have made credible allegations of rape against Bill Clinton, and he said the same thing as did Barbara Olson about Hillary's role in maligning these accusers of Bill Clinton. Now, if you're a woman running for president, and Hillary recently said one of the reasons you ought to vote for me is because I'm a woman, hear me roar, and you're talking about women's rights, and you purport to be a feminist, yet when women have made allegations against your husband, not only have you not believed them, you hired uh, private detectives and, and, and uh, lawyers to go and get them, that's a whole nother Oprah. It's one thing to have a cheating mm-hmm. husband, it's one thing to accommodate the cheating husband. It's one thing to look away. It's a whole other thing to sick private detectives on the accusers. And that is what Hillary has been accused of doing, and that's what's relevant in this, in this election, and only that. Wow. Wow. I, I just read that Joe Biden is losing his mind. He's regretting his decision to not get into this yeah. race. You just he, he, wonder. He, he could have won. He could have won. won. And he still, so, you know, focus, here's the thing. Elizabeth Warren. He still, I think could. He still could. He still could. Yeah. I, think, I, think I, could. I think Hillary's going to, it, it, with Hillary Clinton, it's one thing to say you ignored Ambassador Stevens' multiple requests through cables and emails and the carrier pigeon and hieroglyphics right. begging for additional support. And for some reason, it got lost on your desk all 35 times or however many times he was begging, I need assistance here. There's going to be an attack. This is going to get bad. So let's pretend you're not even setting him up to die to cover up what you're doing, running guns through. Okay, let's just pretend. It's one one thing to say Hillary's not good at her job. And and what do you do? Look at Syria. Look at Libya. Look at Iraq. Look at Iran. Look at North Korea. Look at, look at what she set up. 
and say she's mm-hmm. really, really bad at her job, or like uh, Donald Trump says, is maybe the worst Secretary of State in United States history. It's another thing to say, no, 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 it, she deviously plotted this, and the reason she allowed him to get killed, Ambassador Stevens, was because he knew too much, and the movie 13 Hours about Benghazi's coming out with Michael Bay directing. I don't know if you've seen any of the previews for it, but it looks... Um, it, it, it got me. I've been covering this story since it came out. I smelled a rat from the minute they tried to blame a YouTube video nobody saw. It, it's hard to think that Obama and Clinton were just asleep at the switch when this was happening. It sure feels intentional. And now you can establish with these books and with Donald Trump or somebody else hitting back on these things, you're painting the picture of the person, the person that was kicked off of the Nixon uh, investigation for lack of ethics. Did that did that one turn out to be true as well? The Hillary Clinton thing. Uh, which thing about about uh, getting ben kicked off, getting kicked off for for ethics with the Nixon administration? I, I don't know what happened. All I know is that she was on that committee, and uh, and at one point she was a Goldwater girl, uh, a Republican, and somehow she did a, a switch in ideology. But I have no idea about that. But regarding Benghazi, I think it's real simple. What happened? What happened is Obama was running for office. And his mantra over and over again was, uh, GM is alive, Osama bin Laden is dead, and Al-Qaeda is on the run. You're right. uh, and, they were, and they were high-fiving themselves over uh, joining with the British and the French and bombing Libya and getting rid of Gaddafi. And therefore, Libya now is, is peaceful, and they love America because of what we've done to get rid of the tyrant. And so they willfully look the other way when uh, requests were made for defense. Uh, and they left Benghazi unprepared because they did not want to mess up Obama's narrative. And they believe that narrative. They have uh, this alternate reality where they see what they believe. Uh, and so that's what I think happened with regarding, regarding Benghazi. And what the movie shows is that uh, apparently had uh, we allowed uh, nearby military personnel to go in there and try and rescue them, maybe, maybe something could have been done. And we were told repeatedly that there was nothing that could have been done, fog of war, uh, and, uh, and, and therefore, uh, nearby uh, military personnel could not have been dispatched to help these people. I understand the movie shows heroic contractors who were not obligated to do anything were able to intervene and save lives. Yeah, a lot of lives were saved that day. We know of the four that were killed, but uh, because of the actions that these people took, a lot of people are alive. It was a bloodbath. It was. It it, it may have just been uh, caught asleep at the switch, caught with your pants down. It it, it felt uh, premeditated to me. Um, and there have been so many lies about it from from pretty much every angle we've had. Uh, I think some of the details might lie somewhere in between uh, th- mm-hmm. those two those two combinations. But let's let's do this. Uh, for the last question, Larry. We'll let you get going. Um, North Korea hydrogen bomb. Nope, it was just an earthquake. Um, but you know, it's another thing that you were talking about. You tweeted. You said uh, the media is in a tizzy over whether North Korea has a hydrogen nuke as opposed to just an atomic one. But they cheered the right. Iran deal. They cheered the Iran deal. Um, talk about that. Well, um, you know, the, the very same people that are, that, are, that are upset and worried about whether or not North Korea has taken it to another, another level uh, were doing high fives when Obama essentially uh, has given uh, uh, Iran a pathway to a nuke. Now, if you think that North Korea... Uh, is a problem. Imagine what happens when the Ayatollahs get a nuke. I believe they're going to make Kim Jong Un uh, look like the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and these are the same people uh, who, in, when Bill Clinton was in office, uh, deluded themselves into thinking that there was some sort of nuclear deal, as you as you pointed out earlier in our conversation, uh, that uh, would shut down the nuclear uh, nu- nuclear program. In fact, it did did no such thing. And similarly, we have gone down the same road into believing that the Iranians are somehow uh, not going to develop a nuclear a nuclear bomb when, in fact, we've given them a pathway to do it. They're already uh, cheating, uh, and we took off the table uh, anything having to do with their missile development program. And so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Obama believes that we in America, uh, because of our imperialism, uh, have made things worse, and he really wants uh, us to uh, interfere less, because if we interfere less, uh, our enemies will respect us, and they will no longer uh, uh, be our enemies. It's naive. Uh, 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 former uh, Defense Secretary Robert Gates was asked, why is Obama doing this nuclear deal with Iran? And he said to, to Bob Schieffer on CBS, he's doing it with the hope that after 10 years of prosperity, Iran will turn away from its terrorism. And he said, 
that hope, in his opinion, is unrealistic. So you have the former Secretary of Defense criticizing the sitting President of the United States uh, as being naive for allowing this pathway to develop a nuclear bomb on the part of Iran. I don't know how much more damage you can get. Well, it's very similar to his gun restriction philosophy. Uh, we posted a video talking about it, and the reaction was just, it, it was, it, it'd be comical if, if, if it wasn't uh, either a trolled puppet account or someone that, that believes this, but it's as naive as saying, hey, if we put a few more restrictions on guns, we'll stop violence. No, no, no. It's the opposite. You get more more guns equal less crime. Uh, was that John Lott wrote that? I believe it's John Lott wrote That's that right. book. It was John Lott. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I keep keep forgetting to bring him on the show. Um, but yeah, more guns equal less crime. If everybody was armed, you'd have a much more polite society. If you knew that, you would just you, you wouldn't look at people the wrong way. You wouldn't act out, and it would prevent the bad people from doing more damage than they have been doing. It's just it, it's a completely naive, upside down Superman Bizarro world kind of thing, where Democrats think making things tougher for the good guys is going to help, <laughs> or it's all a scam. I don't know. Well, Let me ask you that about liberalism and 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 the Democrats. Final question. Is it a scam, or are they just naive? Because I often ask, is Barack Obama just incompetent, or is he doing all of this intentionally with a greater plan in mind? Well, Dick Armey, the Republican former House Majority Leader, once said, Republicans believe what they see, Democrats see what they believe. And again, I've mentioned this before, uh, people call Obama arrogant. I think it's beyond that. He lives in what I call an alternative reality. Uh, if we just uh, extend with an unfinched cliff our hand to Iran, Iran will renounce uh, its intentions against us. If we throw the Poles and the Czech Republic under the bus and ignore the nuclear defense deal that George W. Bush negotiated, I can get Russia, who does not like the deal, to lean on Iran, and Iran will then uh, end its nuclear program. Uh, if we just pass another gun law, never mind that the gun law admittedly would not have done anything to stop the mass shootings, then maybe in the future uh, it'll stop some other mass shooting. It is the, the desire to see the world as we wish to see it rather than to see the world as it actually is. I don't know whether you call that a disease, an infirmity, uh, a naivete. No matter what it is, it's not good. Coming from two uh, Cleveland sports fans. <laughs> Absolutely, it's that thing we're born Roll into. Tribe. Yeah, Roll yeah. Tribe. Roll tribe. Yeah, we hired the baseball guy to run the football team now. Go figure, the money ball guy. <laughs> what a world we're living in. Well, Larry, hey, I want to thank you for for joining the show today. I'm, I'm glad we got to do a full sit down. I'd like to do some of these a little bit more uh, regularly, every couple months. Bring you back and do a segment. Um, but definitely, we also want to wish you the best of luck with the upcoming deal with Salem. Should that uh, finalize the way you're hoping it does, all the best wishes from us. Um, maybe take the last thirty seconds here and tell people once again how they can find you, where they can check out your book, where you're, you can be heard live on air, and we'll go from there. I'm on air every night from 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. Pacific Time on AM870 The Answer. You can go online to am870theanswer.com, uh, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Larry Elder, like me on Facebook, uh, and uh, my last book is Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lies, Eight Hours. You can see that on my blog, elderstatement.com. All four of my books are there. You can just click them on to order them if you like. Also, I have a, a podcast. Uh, go to larryelder.com, and all new subscribers to my podcast will get a signed copy of the aforementioned Dear Father, Dear Son, The Two Lies, Eight Hours. Very nice. Definitely check that out. The book sounds fascinating. I think maybe next time we talk, um, maybe dig in a little deeper on that uh, specifically. But yeah, Larry, thanks again for your time. Keep doing what you're doing. Best luck in the future, and we'll talk again soon. And for everybody out there in the TNAM radio network, I just want to thank you for checking out the show. Uh, I want you to go to youtube.com slash the new American media. Subscribe on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore and do a Facebook search. The new American media. I just want to say I appreciate all of you. I love you. We'll talk again soon. Peace. Hi, everybody. You're listening to Agree to Disagree with Brian Engelman, and this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy and not only is the newamericanmedia.com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you, too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do. Of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, 
they're going to wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it, the best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats. They know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that, but you have a friend for life. It doesn't matter if you've got money, you don't have money. What well, doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat? All they need is the sound of your voice and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.